one of my favourites. Nowadays it's Full Beat or it's Powder Foundation. Oh my god, that those kind of HD powders, I cannot stand. That palette was so muddy. So buttery and creamy. Hey guys, so today's video I'm starting another series of my brand review. So today is going to be NYX and I'm going to be covering all of the face products I've ever tried or all the ones I can remember anyway. I've used a bunch of them today as well. Let's get into this. So the first thing is primer and the only primer I still have is the pore filler. This is a fantastic dupe uh, for the benefit professional. If you have like pores here um, or any pores all over your face that you just feel like you need to target. This is a really really good primer. I used to use this all of the time. This was actually in my top favourite primers video a long 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 time ago. I found other pore fillers I prefer now but if you have oily skin and you like pore filler this one has exactly the same texture and consistency as Benefit Professional and is way cheaper and you get more for your money so. I did also have the Angel Primer, that was like really silky all over the face. Um, slightly pore filling, but not as pore filling as that pore filler. I did feel like my makeup kind of slid around a little bit when I was applying it. Um, not a bad primer, it's just not particularly for, maybe for me. Uh, the same for the Honey Do Me Up Primer. That one is super, super stringy. Again, I have really oily skin and I prefer more pore filling kind of primers, so that just wasn't for me. Next is their foundation. I want to say I've only tried two NYX foundations. This is one of them. I have got this on today. Um, this is the HD Studio Photogenic Foundation. I used to love this. This was my everyday favourite foundation for a really long time. And I really, really like this. I do find, with because I have, again, oilier skin, it does tend to break apart a little bit more. Um, it isn't super, super long wearing, even though I did use it for, like, natural work kind of days. I still really like it. I haven't decluttered it because I do genuinely enjoy it. I don't use it enough. I just personally think have foundations I prefer more now than this one. But once I've run out, I probably wouldn't repurchase because I just have so many more. I also tried the drop foundation, but I could not get that to work for me. I heard that people with oily skin loved that and that you only need to literally use like one or two drops for the whole of your face. I've never found that like one pump or a couple of drops of foundation has worked for me unless I'm going for a super natural look. Nowadays it's full beat or it's powder foundation. It just didn't work for me. I found that it dried really quickly as well, so I just couldn't blend it great. So that just wasn't for me. I do have the pot concealer. Can't be asked to go get it. For pot concealers, I don't tend to use them very often. Um, I genuinely have that in my handbag for touch-ups because when I wear my glasses, it will rub off the makeup from my nose. I literally have no idea how to fix that. So I just keep a little pot of concealer and when I take my glasses off, I'll just put a little bit of concealer over the top and hope that kind of blurs it a little bit. The Can't Stop Won't Stop is a fantastic concealer. It's one of my favourites. Um, if you like full coverage Tarte Shape Tape level concealer, you will love this. It has a bunch of shades. I can't remember how dark it goes, but I was surprised at the shade I ended up getting because I swatched so many of these in store. I had every single shade. I ended up get, getting light ivory. I have used that under my eyes today. Full coverage, really, really nice. Still used to this day because it's fantastic. And it has a slanted doe foot, which is holds a decent amount of product. Just, I really, really love this concealer. The powders. I had the HD filter powder, like the loose powder, but oh my god, that those kind of HD powders, I cannot stand them. I end up feeling like I'm inhaling it because it's so fucking fine. It's way too fine for a loose powder. Like, you can have loose powders. I have tons of them that I love. But that loose powder was ridiculous. So hard to use. You literally open it and it just, you felt like the whole entire of your room was taken over by the powder. So I hated it. No, The no filter pressed powder, I got in white. I used to love that thing. It made my face look super, super smooth. To be honest, I probably should get like one of the skin ones and retest it out for powder foundation. I still want to test out the can't stop, won't stop powder foundation as well because I love a good powder foundation again. The more natural makeup is coming back in which I actually really really enjoy. I feel like maybe I should try it out again but it has been years to be honest since I've used it so I honestly can't remember what it was like. 
I just kind of remember it looking like blurring, if I remember rightly. I did end up getting a few of their palettes, like face palettes. One of them was the three step palette. It had like a contour under eye powder, like a matte kind of powder and a highlighter. I loved the idea of that palette. I loved that it had like an ashy contour, but that palette was so muddy. The highlighter was basically just glitter. The matte powder was fine, but you can get that anywhere. And the contour powder was just so muddy, I couldn't blend it out at all. So I ended up getting rid of it, but just say, pass. I forgot how much I love this palette. What I will say is you can now get each of these shades individually. You're not necessarily gonna use every single one of these shades because they're not gonna match your skin tone. I completely get that. I just got this because I loved the idea of them. These are so buttery and creamy. Like I took this to Malaysia because they are so fucking stunning. One swatch, one swipe, and I have it on today. It's so smooth. No skipping, no enhancing pores. Shades are really, really pretty. Would I use every single one of them? No, because something like this is gonna be way too dark for me. Which is why I'm saying that the individuals, if you really like a shade, swatch it in store, see if you like it, and try out one of the single shades because it's more affordable and you're gonna probably get more use out of it. I need to put this back in my rotation. Speaking of highlighters, this brush doesn't have a number on it, but it's like a slanted kind of brush like that. This is really great for highlight. If you want an intense highlight, I feel like this would make any highlight look intense. Those highlights that I just mentioned are super like wet looking metallic highlighters and this would just like really enhance any, any highlights up. It's like fluffy enough, but it's dense enough that you can like really pack it on. You can also use this underneath the eye for setting it or something like that. You can use it for multiple things. I just think this is a fantastic highlighter brush. I'm just gonna quickly talk about some brow products because my eye section is gonna be so long, including eyebrow stuff in there it would be just be way too long. So I did have the micro pencil. The micro pencil, it was good. It's just the formula's a little, I always found the formula just a little bit hard. So there's other skinny brow pencils I way, way, way prefer, like the ColourPop one, the Makeup Obsession one. So many out there now that that was the first one to kind of rival the Anastasia Beverly Hill brow wiz. But there's just so many now from so many companies that you don't have to get the next brow wiz. Next brow wiz. I have also tried out the Fill and Fluff. They have so many brow products, by the way. I was looking through their website, trying to figure out if there was anything that I wanted to test out before I did this video. And the Fill and Fluff was one of the ones I wanted to test out because it has like, a little toothbrush kind of guy on it that you can use to make your brows look, well, apparently make them look really fluffy. And I love having fluffier looking brows. That's the way I like my brows to look. The only problem is you get one of like the triangular kind of brow pencils and to be honest I feel, I feel like I'm really over these. It's great if you want like Instagram kind of brows but if you want fluffy looking brows and a thin pencil is the way to go so yeah I'll use it up I'm sure but I wouldn't repurchase. One of the things I swear by like I don't use clear brow gels anymore but if I use a clear brow gel this is the one I'm going for. The NYX Control Freak is exactly the same if not better than the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel, which everyone was talking about for a long time. It's pretty big spoolie to be honest, probably a little too big nowadays considering you can get like a lot finer ones. So they probably need to update the packaging maybe ever so slightly, but the formula is fantastic. It really does cement your brow hairs. And lastly, I have the Bear With Me brow setter in with hemp. Um, this is more like a creamy kind of consistency. Very similar to the Colourpop one that I really, really liked. It makes my brows look super thick and fluffy. And that's the same reason I really actually enjoy this one. Very similar. So if you can't get Colourpop, this is like the next best thing. So that was all the face and brow products. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like down below. Subscribe if you feel like it. I would really, really appreciate it. I will have part two, which is going to be all about eyes. So eyeshadow, eyeliner, all that kind of stuff. That is going to be in the next video and then we will have lips as the last part. So I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye!